All right, this is a video on testing to see if we can unclog some gel pens, okay? Now, I have hundreds of gel pens, and not all these are un you know clogged up right now, but all of you know where I'm coming from if you're a gel pen user, okay? Over the years, some of the gel pens in this industry were terrible, okay? Some of them, I bought entire sets like these multi-packs, you know, years ago where brand new, they didn't work, none of them worked right out of the pack. And, you know, if you've been a crafter for long enough, you know where I'm coming from, because this seems to have happened to all of us. Now, a lot of our pens are, you know, sitting around. I usually, you know, I mean, it's probably better if you store them on their sign like this, but I do have mine in, you know, like mugs and sitting upright. I use mine, you know, most of them fairly often where, you know, I don't have to worry about um, I have about five different types of gel pens. The majority of them that I've had pretty good luck with are Uniball Signo pens. Now, all of these are 0.7 millimeters, okay? Except for this larger one. It has all this kind of, like, Japanese writing on it. The white one is from... Uh, I guess it's imported or something like that. It still says Uniball Signo right here, but there's all this kind of different writing on it. You might be familiar with this one if you're a crafter and you've been using gel pens a long time and you've looked online for some recommendations. I happen to think that um, probably the larger the rollerball, the less prone it is to potentially clogging. Okay, now on this one right here, there is no more ink in this barrel, okay? Which is a good sign, because that means that we've utilized it, you know, just about all of it. I a little bit clogged. Okay, now here's the thing that you've also seen before. All right, so when you're using these, you're using it and there's rolling, and then there's separation happening, there's breaks in between the spaces like that. Well, okay, now see, as I'm doing this, um, well, I was going to say it's not happening as, as, as extreme because I'm getting the uh, the ink flowing here, but sometimes you get it where it's working, not working, working, not working, working, not working. And that's where, you know, I just say a good whack on a surface like that could help it. I don't know if it's helping this one, but okay. It seems like when I was grabbing them, okay, now this one's not working great. Let's see if I, now see, just kind of scribbling like that is kind of getting it going. I can see that the ink, though, this brown is kind of anemic right here. Let's bang it like that. Always bang it, of course, with the cap on. Don't bang it on the tip like that, okay? All right. Okay, so see that? The difference between this line right here and this... Sorry if I'm working off screen. The difference between this one and this one looks a little bit different. So, again, it doesn't seem like that doing that should really shake that up. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to believe that that gel in there is really um, so thin that it would actually be physically mixing. I don't know if it's just that the tip is being, um, the ink is being forced into the barrel there, where the, just the barrel itself, you know, where it's um, a little bit exposed to air and stuff like that. Maybe in that section right there, it's just not fluid enough, so maybe there's just this tiny little couple millimeters space that we're just kind of working ink down into. Let's see if we can get these um, signos working here. All right, so we notice, I mean, this one hasn't been used at all, okay? This one been, hasn't been used very much at all either. I don't usually use uh, too much yellow or violet, especially the darker tones like this. I might do this one in a violet scene where I just want a little bit of highlight, but I want kind of a darker highlight on a dark object, okay? Okay, now, so my first thing that I usually do when I'm trying to get a gel pen working, I just go with my wacka pen type of thing. So let's try that. Imagine I'm using this like, almost like a hammer, like I'm trying to hammer a nail into, you know, a piece of wood or something like that, okay? So don't be too gingerly with it, because it just, you know, it usually doesn't have... Okay, we got a little bit, we have a little bit of life there, okay, right? So it probably means that it's just kind of clogged up there, and it just can't feed down there, so taking a big whack of it kind of worked some ink out. 
try it going opposite. Obviously, you don't want to do this like on something super hard where you're cracking the tip or something like that or forcing this into it, you know. I usually like doing it on, you know, like a magazine or newspaper. I This paper right here is a stack of it, so that helps out a little bit. Okay, so this is, there's a little bit of life here. There's not too much. This is probably the most annoying, probably, video you ever see. So every time I do that, it's getting a little bit of ink down, so it remains to be seen if I can kind of get it permanently flowing in here. I don't think that that binder separation is so extreme. This pen can also be 20 years old, where this is a really stiff gel right in here, and it just won't feed, you know. It has, you know, it can potentially... Okay, now I'm not getting anything in anymore. Okay, now here's something that someone pointed out to me on Facebook. This is another thing that they do. They take this out of here, and this being like a straw, you know, with this hole right here, they blow into this thing right here. And they were talking about, you know, talking about, you know, getting some of that ink out here. Okay, so let's try that. I'm going to try all these things that people have suggested over the years. I don't know if I'm going to dip this in alcohol, but I think I've heard that too. But, all right, I'm doing this off camera. Oh, you know what? I can see this one might be kind of dry on the inside. I'm looking at it. You see that kind of splotchiness right here? This might be dry on the inside, okay? But... We'll try this blowing here first, okay? Hmm. Okay. Uh-oh. Well, okay, I thought that was going. There, there might not be as much ink in here as I thought, but that worked right there. I just blew into this side. Don't try to, try not to blow out your eardrums when doing this, though. I have a feeling that if this ink was okay, it would get going, because I get a pretty good line out of it up here, but... And this blowing is working pretty well. Okay, I don't, I don't think this one is um, going to be saved. Okay, here's another thing that we can try here. But I, like I said, I think I'm trying with the wrong pen, because I, I see that texturing on here. So I think it's just not in perfect liquid form anymore. I think there's little bits of it here and there. Okay, now here's another thing that people have said too. A lighter, okay? I happen to not think that that's going to help, and I've never tried it before, but I thought I'd try it here. All right. I wouldn't think you'd need to do it a lot, you know. But it would seem like I would need to light the... Uh, you know, the gel to put it into, you know, form. Because we can see it's rolling just fine. Well, I got a little bit out of it, though. Let's try it all. Let's try it. Okay, that lighter is gone in there. And we'll have this pen like this. We'll whack it. Okay. This one's toast. I'm not going to try it. Now let's go with this one right here. Let me see... All right, this one right here, this one's a dud. The point seven, practically brand new. Maybe I never used it. Maybe that was the problem. I don't know. That one's not working. Uh, what I, okay, now here's one that had a little bit of mark marking, okay? Okay, now here's the one right here. There's a little bit of separation there, too, but let's see what we can do here.
All right. Uh, kind of. Okay. <laughs> right there. It kind of petered out right here, but that's pretty long. Okay, I think there's hope for this one. It's really frustrating because one of the things is, too, we're not using our gel pens that much, usually, unless you're um, an adult coloring book person where, you know, they have these really large sets of gel pens, and then they're doing a ton of coloring with it, okay? This is a hundred and, is it 80 color gel pen set? But it also comes with all those refills on them, okay, for each color. So they, they know that you're going to run out of colors or some will clog, but they send you a refill for every one of those. That set cost me $25, okay? Okay, now this one's starting to go a little bit. It's kind of in that broken line type of thing. kind of broken up, right? I said not to do this, but I'm just doing this very gently here. Uh. Why is it working when I do this? It likes being used in like a hatching motion. Kind of a harder push, so maybe what I'm doing is I'm depressing the ball back up away from this point right here of contact and it maybe it's opening up a wider space for that ink to come out. I don't know. Okay, I think I got it. No, I was going to say, I think I got it here. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm kind of pressing a little bit harder And I'm writing slower, okay? If I go real fast, I think it's, yeah, it just kind of peters out instantly, okay? Let me try to go for a slower line. Yeah, see, this is a slower continuous line. Okay, so I might have been able to go faster with this one when it was early on, okay? But I have a feeling that with that binder and gel separation, the viscosity of this is ink has changed. It's thicker, okay? So it doesn't allow for as fast a flow. Okay, now it wasn't flowing before when I did, you know, before I did this blowing thing either. I don't think it, you know. But, okay, now this is, this is working fine. But see, anytime I start going a little bit faster, it breaks up. So you have to find the viscosity of, you know, your given pen and what its capabilities are at that given point in time in its life, okay? All right, so this one, it's good. Okay, now I was going to show you some other ones here. And some of these are more pastel-based, some are more fluorescent. This one, yeah, this one wasn't working at all. Oh my god, the whack worked. I think I was aware that this one wasn't working at all, okay? So the whole hack of... Whack a pen. I was shocked here. I didn't set this up either. You saw where it wasn't working at all. Okay, so a couple whacks and this one's fine right here. See, I don't use this one too often because I use mostly my gel pens in highlight form. Um, so I don't know. I haven't tried this one in a really long time, but I know it wasn't working at some point in time. So the whack, okay. That was perfect. I don't have to do all the blowing and stuff like that. Okay, so I've gone through these signos right here, and these are not new, okay? In fact, there's different types. Some of them have this kind of more pointy-looking, you know, type of thing. These ones are more, I don't know, blunt at the tip right here. These are not new, and by and large, these signos are working. I didn't go through a big pile of a hundred of them and, you know, pull out 20 of them. They're still working right here. Some of these are not working, some of them are, okay? Okay, let's test out some of these other ones right here. Now, this is not not going to be a really fair type of a depiction of a lot of these pens. A lot of these pens of mine, like I said, they might be 20 years old. I, I mean, not look at this one right here. This one's 
is com this paint. What is this? It's a jelly roll glaze by Sucker. That thing, that ink in there, it was sitting like this. So that that ink is completely dry. Okay. It shouldn't work because I don't think there's any ink in there. It, golly, that really wants to work though. Look at that. I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing in there. There must be just some residual ink. In there. Let me see if that's... Yeah, that's completely uh, solidified in there. But look at that. Oh, my God. That's the little pen that could. I mean, there is nothing there. But that wants to work. So, apparently... Now, I do seem to recall that with some of these jelly rolls, okay? Um, in terms of their longevity. Now this one's kind of like a like a neon green here. That's not bad. Okay, now I can't take the back off this thing, so let me see. This one's not, you can't take it apart and blow down here. Maybe if you take a pair of pliers or something like that. Oh my gosh, this is getting, this is flowing right here though. Well, Kind of. I was fooled. It's not too bad I'm getting some gel here from these pens. Which is a good sign. That means that, you know, you can get it back in liquid form. You're ready to go. Okay, so the jelly rollers, by and large, look pretty good. Okay. That kind of shocks me. Okay. All right, now, so all, I don't know if all these are jelly rollers. Not all of them are. Okay, here's a pilot shoes. Let's try a metallic jelly roll. And again, this one's completely dry. I can see in there. I mean, they're not used in the same way. Sometimes you like a jelly roller or a gel pen, you know. But... All right, this, this is like a metallic copper. Okay, I didn't even get, I just whacked it before I even tried it. Maybe it was working right off the bat, but look at that. Uh, kind of glistening copper there. So jelly rollers, jelly roll, not too bad. Let me change the exposure of the. Okay, here's the thing. One of the things that I like using too, and you know, as an alternative to um, gel rollers, okay, because of this situation here, okay. I've used paint pens, okay. Now, the paint pens you're familiar with, um, you know, a lot of the, the gold and silver types, okay. That And these types, paint pens have the, that shaker, um, element inside, okay? So these are all, these are Sharpie paint pens. We can hear that little BB inside shaking up and down in the barrel, keeping that liquid paint uh, in, in solution, okay? So they don't have a roller ball on it. What they have is just kind of this open tip okay there's just this little hole in here and these are what those types where you need to press them and then it opens up this um, space in the back to access that paint okay and it gets it flowing don't if it's not flowing it you don't just depress 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 and then what you're doing is you're opening up that um, body the barrel to all that liquid and it's going to come pouring out of there, okay? You just kind of get this going like this, usually when it's brand new, okay? And you can do these dot patterns and whatnot. I've had these ones for quite a while and I use them quite a lot. I've been using this pink one here and like little spring blossoms, okay? Sometimes it gets a little bit more translucent and less opaque, so that's when you shake it up and you have to shake up that binder and paint. These are paint in here. You know, so if you have like a thinner or something like that, or oil paints or whatever, you know what I mean? They have to shake up. 
Now these ones are the males and acrylic painter. It says marks on anything acrylic based. I've never tried it on multi things, you know, I don't know if it was going to work on glass or something like that. It doesn't seem like it would. But these wings are incredibly inexpensive. There's all kinds of brands of these. I have a feeling they're out of some central plant in, I don't know, overseas somewhere. But same type of thing. Everything's plastic on this. It's probably what makes them cheap. These ones right here, I think the barrel, I think, is metal. And then that little tip there is metal. Okay, these ones are just all plastic. It's got a plastic little feeder nib. And again, you kind of depress it like this to get it flowing. I've got all binder on this one. This is a horrible instructional video. Okay, here it comes. Sorry about that. Now, some of these are not working. All right, I had a couple that are working really well. I've been using this a lot, so I don't know. Maybe I used up all the uh, the pigment. At it. No, here it comes. Okay, so see that? I had to shake it up a little bit more, and there it comes. These ones are not great in terms of uh, opacity, but they're not bad. Look at this. I can get these ones flowing pretty well, even at a fast rate, okay? So... Um, Not bad, and dots, okay? So sometimes for me, these things like this are a really good alternative to the white gel pen, okay? I'm often going for little dots on things, you know, those little highlights, okay? And I don't have to worry about something rolling. Okay, now, doesn't mean I'm done with my, you know, my pens like these, I just don't, these ones don't come, as far as I know, in colors other than black and white, okay? But they're not bad. Okay, now this pen right here is, this has to be 25 years old or something like I think I tried using my silver side recently. Okay, this gold side is coming right out of the uh, thing there, but um, the tip. But see, here's the thing about these paint pens, okay? As long as the paint is still in solution, you have that paint in there, these things can really last quite a long time. I don't expect my Meowsons to last, you know, forever. This thing costs, like, it's less than a dollar. It's like 50 cents each or something. I got a 10-pack for $5, okay? So, you know, I'm not worried about that. But look at this silver paint pen right here. This thing works fantastic. Is it better than a gel metallic? I don't know. I'm inclined to think yes, but who knows. And this one also has one of those xylene things in it, so it really smells. It says caution vapor harmful, so don't be, uh, you know, sniffing this pen right here. The jelly rolls work pretty good. The paint pens work really well. Um, the gel pens, okay, just come in tons more colors, okay, than what's available out there. You know, I mean, this one right here, there's, there's metallics, um, there's glitter, there's pastel, neon, and just the regular style. Oh, and there, I think there's multi-tone ones too. You pull some of these out and it has different colors in there. So someone could be writing and you get different color, different color, and you get different color, you know, as you're continuing to write in there, okay? So these are a lot of fun to use. And as far as I know, most of, I haven't used like 90% of them because I just don't do a lot of like glitter types of things with this. Okay, so this one's brand new. I probably think I don't use purple glitter too often. And this has been sitting in my, um, you know, my studio here for, you know, whenever I bought it two years ago or something like that. So I haven't used it. Okay, now, see, so here's the thing. These pens right here, this out of this gigantic set, um, glitter and whatnot, watch this one not work at all. 
Okay, now these ones right here, to me, the quality of ink seems inferior, okay? In terms of the pigment to binder ratio. So they're not quite as strong if I grab a, a, a pastel ink like this from Uniball Signo. Okay, it's of a certain strength. Let me see if I can find something that could be potentially the equivalent. Now this one's uh, glitter. Uh, I know I have it. It has to be. Okay, here's the Uniball Signo. Okay, neon orange. All right. This one's the Shuttle Shuttle Art neon orange, and they look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the white one definitely, okay, is, let's see if we can show it here. Okay, this one's kind of struggling along. This one is the one that I have used quite a bit, and I used it for kind of the weaker, uh, oh my gosh, okay, that one's not working at all. I use it for the weaker kind of um, pigment to ratio, pig, Pigment, pigment to binder ratio, okay? These ones are thinner, okay, just in general. And what I think that Shuttle Art did was they don't want all this clogging happening. So what they did was they make the gels a lot thinner, so they're not usually quite as strong. That one looks pretty good right there, though. Um, but I think they do that so they don't clog on you, as, or they're not as prone to clogging as the ones that have more pigment and less binder. They're going to be more opaque and you're, you know, it might have like a, a smoother look to it, okay? But, so there's a little bit of a trade-off there. This one right here, that one, that one looked pretty good, so I don't know. But that, that's what, that's been my kind of experience with those so far. All right, so anyways, um, these different types of sets, like these multi-pack sets, you know, 50 for 10 bucks, uh, 180 for, uh, with 180 refills, I think that's what it was, for $25, okay? Uh, those ones, by and large, I think are of the same kind of composition, okay? They're a little bit thinner, all right? But I don't have an experience with so much clogging with that. I live in California. If you're somewhere out in a very arid, hot area, air conditioning running a lot, super arid in your home, that's probably going to affect um, your pen's performances over time. So it could be different in different areas, you know. Drier the environment, it seems like these would be more prone to potentially uh, clogging and drying up faster. But I think all of you that are in those types of areas, you know, you're already kind of familiar with that type of thing, and you compensate for when you need to. People that are in Arizona all buy re-inkers anytime they buy a pad, okay? If there isn't a re-inker available for a pad, they just don't, they're not going to bother with that type of pad, okay? So I would think that would apply to the gel pens as well, but experimentation, you know, but... Uh, going back to kind of the cheaper multi-pack sets, I keep grabbing this over here. By and large, when I did my research and I wanted to get more colors um, from, you know, of gel pens like this, all of these packs like this, they were all like over four star reviews, or really close to five. And I would definitely give this a five star review right here. Um, and it's because I, they do what they're supposed to do, and they do it really well. And I, you know, if this sat around for like one year and it started to clog, I would change my review, I'm sure. But these are still working really well. And plus, like that white one, you know, you know it wasn't flowing really well for me. Well, that pen cost like, I think it was like 15 cents or something like that, or 12 cents or something like that. But it was hard to, to rate because it also comes with your refill on that. So we're talking about like a like a 12 cent pen or something like that. And the refills are, you know, it just, it's, you put that insert, it's kind of hard to figure out, you know, what color is which. See, it doesn't say on here, okay, this one goes, and these aren't numbered either, so you just kind of have to 
look for it and find it. That's why I haven't done any kind of a refills. I, I, I think it would be easy to find the white one or something like that. But these all are really inexpensive. And like I said, there was there were so many different brands. They're probably made in some central plant somewhere and they're just branded differently. But you can find some really great deals out there. And, you know, if I were to just be buying completely new, I would probably... I probably have less Uniball Signos, but I've bought these. A lot of these are like 10 years old, okay? And they're still working, you know, pretty well. We've tossed out a couple today. But something like this and the, uh, the paint pens would probably be a really good choice. I happen, for scenic stamping, I happen to like the Sharpie um, Pastel set. So these five colors right here all came in um, one set, okay? And I've been using these, I don't know, I think it's been more than five years. And these ones are still working for me. And I use like that blue one quite often. And I like using this pink one and this uh, lavender one in kind of representations of things like um, spring blooms and whatnot. And then I've recently bought this set of meows and um, acrylic white paint pens, all right? And those work really well. I think I originally looked up to see if the, I think it was the Marvy white paint pen was still available. Super, super opaque white dots that, you know, um, I was able to make with those. I think I, can, I couldn't find those, I think. I, I don't think they're still making them. But that was a really fantastic one. But these ones came up. These ones are a little bit more translucent, and they're really close to kind of the old Sakura pen touch, I believe it was called, white paint pens, where these ones are a little bit more translucent. But these ones here, like I said, they're like 50 cents each or something like that. So if I'm using something like this, and it gives me a good amount of life, and I use it across several different scenes, you know, I don't mind if these things dry out on me after, you know, 15, 20 scenes or something like that, you know, when you're spreading out like a 50 cent object over the course of that amount of time. And if it works great for me during that time and if it starts to clog up on me, then so be it, you know, because, you know, the price point is uh, fine when it comes to that. Okay, so, so much for this kind of rambling, you know, horrifically uh, presented video. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope you got something out of it, you know, besides, um, you know, a total waste of your time uh, watching it if you sat through. Like I said, I'll try to edit it down and I'll show some of those um, successes, especially of some of these other ones and the jelly rollers and how those are working after all that time. But this is a test here for me, too, to test out some different... Um, processes and solutions that I've seen posted over the years. I don't think the lighter one worked for me, but it, maybe it does work for you on some of your different things. I think the composition of the media is probably different, um, you know, in all these different types of uh, um, makes. Okay, here's an aqua lip again. That one's not really working well, but this one again, I think this is at least 10 years old probably, and some of these I've never used at all, so it's just been sitting upright, you know, for a very long time. Okay, so anyways, if you have any questions, you can drop me a note in the comment section, but, you know, even better, if you've had some different types of pens, um, and you've had successes in kind of resurrecting them, or just keeping them flowing for a very long time, how do you store them? Do you store them in Ziploc bags to keep them more airtight? Or if it doesn't work, you know, especially, and you've got them to work again, please leave a note in the comment sections, you know, so that this can, you know, video can potentially be a resource of, you know, some information as far as, um, you know, kind of a bank of knowledge out there from um, all of you that have, uh, you know, found uh, some good solutions, or maybe you found some really great brands that I haven't mentioned here, and uh, you can put it in the comment section below, and we can all kind of learn from it, including myself. So, anyways, uh, thanks again for watching.